Welcome back. Now we're outside again today. It's another gorgeous day, so why not? Now there's a good reason for being outside as well, and we'll come on to that a little bit later on. But today's episode is going to continue some of this track work which I started last time. Now I've made a bit of progress in as much as I've completed one of the first turnouts, and it seems to work pretty reliably. So today we'll have a look at what's involved in doing that. I've got a couple more to build and hopefully we'll be able to make some progress with those. So here's a quick look at one of the turnouts that I've, I've made previously. And let's just have a look at the basic parts. So we've got the common crossing here, often incorrectly called the frog. Either side of that we've got some wing rails. We've obviously got the stock rails that are kind of like the outer rails of the whole turnout, and the check rails, and the closure rails and the switch blades. Now they are fairly straightforward. The critical bit is the crossing, the common crossing, and its position between the two stock rails. Now normally if we were building on a paper template, common advice is to start by laying the common crossing and setting everything out from it. And that can be done quite easily using little gauges. In this case, because this turnout is on a very slight bend, I laid this stock rail first and then used my gauges to set out the position of the common crossing and built the rest from that. So what we'll do now is we'll move and we'll have a look at one that's ready to be built and we can have a look at how that's set out and what I've done to stop it moving about and keep it nice and stable. So these two turnouts will be the subject of this video and you can see I've already made a start on them. So I'm using nickel silver code 75 ball head rail and the plastic chairs are exacto scale chairs and I bought those through the Scale 4 Society stores. Now previously I'd made up the common crossings and we'll show you those on a drawing in just a moment and I have already fabricated the wing rails which are going to sit kind of hang on all fingers and thumbs here they're going to sit sort of roughly there now what I hope you can see I'll put some little brass rivets in here and this is so that I can solder the key parts of this common crossing to keep it stable I've already put a little blob of solder on the crossing nose so that's now stable, that's not going anywhere. The rest of it is held by the plastic chairs quite firmly. This is, this is quite strong, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Now if I get a couple of gauges. So as before, this stock rail was laid first and then using a variety of gauges, and we'll look at them all in a bit more detail in a minute, I was able to get the loose V, the common crossing, and kind of place that roughly where I wanted it to be, and with a combination of gauges, hold it in exactly the right place. So the gauge at 18.83 millimeters is established on this road coming this way. Now, once I was happy with that and that was all fitted in place, I used the same set of gauges, but this time the other way round and was able to measure this stock rail from here. So this is also 18.83 millimetres and that's really accurate. A lot of people when they look at P4 track they think how on earth can I work to a, an accuracy of a hundredth of a millimetre? Well the reality is you're just using gauges and so it's quite straightforward. Now the actual line that these stock rails take is less critical and we'll look again at that in a little bit more detail in a minute but what is absolutely fundamental is that the gauge across these two points here is, is exact and we don't want anything to move from expansion or anything like that so that's why I'm using these little brass rivets just to hold everything and you can see I put some more in place so that I'm going to have two soldered connections for this wing rail and that will hold that in exactly the right position 
and the same for the other side which I almost certainly won't be able to balance in place without knocking the first one off uh, I can't anyway it's some, something roughly like that okay so the first element I'm going to fit here will be this wing rail which is the straight rail that comes off of here and what I need to do is set that up so it's directly parallel with this um, stock rail and to do that oh, I'll add I've got one of the plastic chairs on the end that I'm going to use to hold it initially so if I it's probably easier demonstrated rather than talk through So I've hooked this gauge onto the stock rail. And that's now holding that wing rail in line at the correct gauge for this route. Now if we have a look here, we can see this gap here is far too big. It needs to be the same here, this sort of flange way clearance. And we've got all sorts of things we can use to help get that correct. We've got a little piece of shim here. This is the correct thickness. Or we've got a variety of different gauges. And I'm going to use this little one. So I can pop that in place. And by sliding this along... That gap will close up until such a point that it's nice and tight against that that rail or that gauge. Now there's a bit of flexibility in that, we'll sort that out in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is get this where I like it first of all. And I'm going to put a little bit of solvent on this chair, glue that in place, then I'll still have some flexibility and I'm going to set up a couple more gauges to get this really accurate. And then as I say, a couple of little spots of solder on those brass pins and that should make for a really nice job. So I'm going to put this butanone solvent on with a brush and capillary action will draw that under the chair. And that'll be as good as gold. Now whilst the glue is going off with that, perhaps now is a good time to discuss how the components for this turnout were made. Now what I've got here is a drawing uh, produced in Templot which is the software I've used to design all the track work and typically the one I've got in front of me here is, is actually the wrong hand. It's uh, This is a, a left-handed turnout whereas the one I'm building is right-handed but not to worry you get the idea um, and basically what I've done is off camera I've made up all of these rails to to suit so I made I had a, a session one afternoon I sat down and made a handful of the check rails and these wing rails and crossing V's etc so I've got a stock of them with which to to do all of this work but that's basically how they've been done um, just copied off of a drawing So with the first wing rail now in place, albeit I can still, I've still got a bit of flexibility, I can still move it a little bit, it's now time to fit the second. And that's going to be exactly the same as before. That's going to sit on there, something like that. And we need to set this one up now to suit or to gauge from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my same tool there we go that's now held to gauge here and you could see how we've got a little bit of movement here and we need to set that flange clearance up also. So that's how it's going to be done. So I shall glue this chair in place, then get the soldering iron out and we'll solder the rest of that common crossing up.
so that really is the hard work all done now I'm happy with the gauging of these wing rails the gauge fits nicely wherever I put it and will roll through no problem at all so the next thing is to close these off and there's a school of thought that says we could just use one long rail here um, uh, nothing wrong with that it, the prototype there would have been a straight rail and a set of fish plates and then this end would be the switch blade itself now I've got some examples of the blades here and hopefully you can see I filed a taper on the ends of those we'll talk about those in just a minute but I think what I'm going to do is run the rails to here and we'll, we'll pop the fish plates in and we'll try and do a good job of it and, and make it just look like the real thing now the argument for making them in one piece is that there's one less joint and of course everywhere you've got a joint there's potential for a derailment but hopefully we could do this nicely enough that we can have the joint in and everything will, will work nicely so it really is plain sailing from here in that all I need to do is thread some or cut the rails or some bits of rail to the right length thread the chairs on drop them on use my gauges to get those in place so we should be able to do that quite quickly I'll get on with that now the thing to bear in mind when fitting these chairs is that and this may not show up on the camera but there's a little key represented in the molding and that would be a wooden key in in real life that would be tapped in to hold the rail firmly seated in the chair and the direction that those face is depending on which book you read quite critical the idea is that the direction of the trains passing over it will have a kind of a wedging force and tend to pull those keys in so for example on this line here which is the down line heading towards the station all the keys point the other way so that it has that effect this line which is the up line I've got the keys facing the other way so what I need to do is just establish which way round is it and thread these onto the the rail and I'll show you the method I use for doing this it can be a bit time consuming um, so I'll speed this bit up So here's the rail with all the correct chairs fitted and if you're interested in what chairs go where um, I can show you a little drawing. This is available on the Exacta Scale website. I'll put a link in the description. It sort of shows what chairs go where. So having got all the right chairs, hopefully in the right place, put those out of the way, um, the next task is to fit this now these little fish plates are tricky little blighters and I should have my glasses on but I've not got them and it's bright sunshine so it's anyone's guess as to whether or not I'm actually going to get this to fit so I'm using the blade just to open up the gap to make it easier to slide on ah. So it's on there, all seems pretty good. And what we could do is use the gauges now to hold this off of our stock rail. Fortunately, I've got plenty of gauges, the more the merrier, a bit like clamps. There we go. Now I can come in with my solvent and glue these into place. I'll do a few of them and then check to see how it runs.
So everything bar the switch rails are now done and so it's time to test this and see if it all works. You'll see I've added the second closure rail here exactly the same way as I did the first plastic chairs gauged this time off of the diverging stock rail and let's see how it works. Now P4 wheels have scale flanges and if there's anything wrong these things will derail they're hard enough to put on the track. There we go so let's try this Obviously I can't go any further, I've not put the switch rails on yet. So that's nice and smooth. And then on the turnout road, now I can't go very far here because I've only got tractor here. That seems pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So then the next task will be to fit the switch blades and if everything else has gone well this should be a fairly straightforward job. Now to help me do so I've previously filed a taper onto the end of this blade and uh, hopefully the camera will pick that up. Now there's a slight kink or bend in this curved stock rail and the idea is the tip of the blade will sit up against that kink, form a straight run through uh, and, and sit very nicely against that curve as it runs off there. That's the plan. Now I've marked this to length. I'm going to cut it just here and try it out. And I'm going to cut it slightly oversize and then file the end back and keep fettling it until that end sits nicely. So if we sort of exaggerate it, I'll just bring it back until it sits nicely. Now the inside face of the rail, I've also filed the rail head off to provide a nice smooth transition across. Let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I'm quite happy with the, the fit of it here. I'll try a wagon through it in a minute just to check it's all okay, but it seems pretty good. What I'm going to do is put the remaining chairs here and here, and that should help hold that sort of firmly in place.
so we're nearly done now. I've put the second switch rail in, in place and miraculously seems to work rather smoothly. So what I'm going to do now is temporarily fit a tie bar here and I'm using a piece of um, double sided copper clad board. And I don't know if you can see, I put two pieces of rail here that I've bent to a sort of a curved shape and they're acting like a little spring pushing that upwards. So what I'm going to do is just hold the ends of the switches down so I'll solder one side then I'll adjust the opening on the other blade, solder that one and when I remove these two springy bits of rail they, the tie bar will be remain sort of firmly against the underside of the rail and it will stop the ends of the switch blades lifting. So then that's pretty much progress for today's video. I think we'll end it there, um, otherwise this will go on and on. So what have we achieved? Well we've got another turnout complete and it seems to be working nicely. We've got another one sort of half built, that won't take long, I'll finish that off camera. And then the next sort of major hurdle will be this single slip here. Now I've consciously not gone into too much detail in building some of these things and so some of the finer points, no pun intended, like the crossing V and the blades, I've consciously not covered those. I'm, I'm no expert, who am I to tell you how to do it? In the description I'm going to leave some links to some sources of really good information that I think if you're interested in fine scale track, whatever the gauge, um, I think you'll find it useful. So. That's it then for today I think. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.